So hi folks and welcome to the 22nd video in my getting started series for the game B17 Flying Fortress The Mighty Eighth. Now this short video is one that I hadn't planned on doing, but while researching for the B17 manual engine startup video, which will come after this one, I came to the conclusion that there were significant errors in the way that some of the cockpit controls have been modelled in this game. Now being aware of these errors is critical if you want to be successful in manually piloting the B-17s and this is the reason that I felt that this justified a separate video tutorial. Now, the first error is with regard to the propeller pitch controls which can be seen by pressing either the F4 or F5 function keys when you're in the pilot or co-pilot's instrument view. So first of all let's go to the pilot and we're going to press number 3 on the keyboard to select the pilot and you could have just left clicked on him there. I'm going to press I to go to the instrument view and this takes us to the pilot's overview which is uh, also accessed by pressing the F4 key when you are in these instrument views. So if I press F5 that takes us to the co-pilot's instrument overview. So let's press F4 again, we'll come back here. And the propeller pitch controls are located at the bottom of this control pedal store here. Now the labelling on these controls is correct in terms of how it was on real B-17s. That is, low RPM is at the bottom and high RPM is at the top. However, in this game they have mistakenly reversed the way the levers operate. That is to say, when the levers are moved to the upper position, they actually have the effect of decreasing engine RPM when they should in fact increase it. Now I'll demonstrate this right now. Watch engine number two's tachometer over here and we'll look at the RPMs for engine number two indicated by this white needle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the number two prop pitch control handle and I'm going to drag it up. So watch that tachometer for engine number two and as I move that control lever up you can see that the engine RPMs have decreased instead of increasing. Now similarly moving the levers down has the effect of increasing engine RPM again when they should actually in fact decrease it. So I'll demonstrate this right now. I'm going to again right click on engine number two's prop pitch control handle. I'm going to drag it down and you can clearly see the RPMs for engine number two increasing. Now I had wondered for some time why the game had the propeller pitch levers set at the low RPM position by default. They're always in this low position here. On real B-17s, these levers would be moved to the high RPM position for engine startup, takeoff, and landing. And therefore it would make more sense for them to be in the high RPM position by default. Well now I know that they are in fact set in the high RPM setting as I was expecting. It's just that the levers operate in the opposite way to what they're supposed to. Now for guidance on when to adjust the propeller pitch controls, I have referred to the official USAAF B-17 pilot training manual, which can be viewed online for free here, and I'll place a link to this in the video description below. Now the charts and tables on pages 78 and 79 of this manual are very useful and show that reducing engine RPM can dramatically reduce fuel consumption if the manifold pressure is also managed accordingly. However, after much testing, I have become convinced that the modeling of the engine's performance and behavior in the game does not even remotely match these charts and tables regardless of the fuel type used. One aspect of this is that it is only possible to reduce the engine speed via the propeller pitch controls by a measly 3 to 400 RPM. That is from 2500 down to about 22 or 2100 RPM while still being able to maintain a cruising indicated airspeed of 150 miles per hour at 25 or 26,000 feet. At around 21, 2200 RPM, the throttles and turbos become maxed out. Any further adjustment of the propeller pitch controls to reduce engine RPM results in the B-17 losing speed and braking formation. Also, after a lot of testing, I have found that even if you do reduce the engine RPM down to say 2200, throughout the entire cruising portion of a mission, the rate of fuel consumption remains the same. Now, on a final note, I have never seen the AI adjust the pitch of the propellers. The control levers are always fully down throughout every mission. And based on these findings, I can only conclude that the benefits of adjusting propeller pitch on engine and fuel management have not been modelled in the game. 
and as such, propeller pitch adjustment was never added to the AI pilot control algorithm. To my mind, these issues are a major omission by Wayward Design, particularly after engine management was added to the game in patch number two. Now speaking of engine management, which I'll be covering in depth in a later video, reducing engine manifold pressure reduces the amount of heat generated by the engines. Unfortunately, the effect of varying engine speed between say 21 and 2500 RPM via the propeller pitch controls, as we've been discussing, well, I found that this has negligible effect on the manifold pressure. And as such, I can only conclude that there is no benefit to use of the propeller pitch controls to assist in engine temperature management. Therefore, the only recommendation I can make is to just completely ignore propeller pitch in this game. Unless, of course, you need a feather prop, which uses different controls anyway. Now, another set of controls in the cockpit that are incorrectly modeled are the turbo supercharger controls. And that are these four levers here, S1 through to S4. Now, similarly to the propeller pitch controls, these have been modeled to operate in reverse to how they did in reality. In this game, these are set to the off position by pushing them completely away from you. And I'll just demonstrate that right now. If I push, push S1 completely away from me, you can see engine number one, the power output via the manifold pressure here has dropped dramatically. Now, similarly, if I were to pull that all the way towards me, that would set the turbo to full on. And so I'm just gonna left click on that, drag it all the way forward towards me, and that has increased the output, the power output from the engine, as we can see on the manifold pressure there. And in reality, that would have actually have turned the turbo off. I'm just gonna right click on it there, just to give it back to the AI control. Now in this game, this isn't as big a deal as the propeller pitch controls being reversed. Most of the time when playing the game, you'll either be using the keyboard throttle controls or a joystick throttle control and if you are, then the turbo supercharger controls are automatically moved based on your throttle commands. However, if you are adjusting the turbo supercharger controls using the mouse in the cockpit, then it is critical that you know that the levers are reversed. And as, as I showed you a moment ago, remember that if you move a control to the off position, then you need to push it completely away from you. And if you want to move a turbo control to its fully on position or to increase the turbo, you pull it towards you. Now another issue with the cockpit is that the animation for the throttles and the turbo supercharger control levers is, is very messed up. <laughs> um, in that if you move your throttle control when in manual mode, and I'm going to go into manual mode right now by pressing the M key. Now if I move the throttle control slightly up from zero, pay attention to the throttle control handles here and the turbo control levers here. Now I'm just going to apply a tiny amount of throttle there. And I did that using my joystick, but exactly the same thing happens if you do that via the keyboard. You can see that the throttle control handles have moved to their full up position to 100%, and the turbos have moved completely towards you. So the turbos have gone to full on or 100%. Now, that's just an error in the animation the throttle is actually correctly set and it will correct itself once the engine is started up. So for instance, if I were to start up engine number one, you would see the throttle and turbo control handles and levers moving to the position that you have set via your keyboard or joystick. And I'm just going to jump to that right now and I'm just going to show you that change happening after it's been through a startup sequence. Okay, so I'm starting up the engine right now and engine number one is about to kick into life. And you can see there, suddenly the throttle moves to its uh, set position. And you can often tell that it's actually working and it's in proper control with your throttle controls because you can see the actual throttle handle is vibrating. So I'm sure I've mentioned it in a prior Getting Started video, but I'll mention it again here because it is very important. Um, in this game, to remember that if you use the left mouse button to move an engine control, then it will lock out control and management of that engine from the AI. And it will also lock out throttle control of that engine to the keyboard or joystick. And so you'll know that this has happened if you're trying to manually adjust your 
throttle by using the keyboard or joystick and you're getting absolutely zero response from it, it is probably because you left clicked on one of the engine controls in the cockpit and locked it out. And I'll just demonstrate that right now. So let's left click on the turbo control handle here and I'm going to pull it all the way towards me. And you can see we've got the corresponding power output increase from engine number two, but it has stopped moving and the control of that throttle is now outside or has been locked out from the AI engine management piece. So if I was to go for instance into manual mode now and I move the throttle control on my joystick you can see that the only throttles that are responding are one, three and four. Number two has frozen. Now to get that back into control I can right click on it. If I do right click there you can see it's now realigned with the other throttle controls as per my joystick setting. And if I go back into manual mode you can see that the AI also has control back for engine number two there. Now if you do wish to manually adjust an engine control without locking out the AI and the manual throttle controls then right click to adjust the control instead of left clicking on it. Now one thing to note is that if you do manually adjust the cow flap switches here and the only way to open these cow flap switches is to left click on them. If I left click on engine number one's cow flap switch there you can see that the lockout has occurred on engine number one. So even though you have no choice but to left click on these cow flap switches to open them, if I do it for all of them, you can see all four engines have now become locked out. Those uh, control levers are no longer moving and no longer under AI control. To now put them back into AI control after adjusting the cow flap switches, you have to come back to these levers and right click on each one and that puts it back into AI control again. Well that's it folks, many thanks for watching. I very much hope that this video has been useful. If it has then please give me a thumbs up below, that really helps me out. If you're not already a subscriber then please subscribe, I've got lots more videos like this coming up. Stay tuned, the next video in this series will cover how to manually start up the B17 engines. That's it, thanks for watching folks, take care, bye bye.